everyone, welcome back to Touch Slayer Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff and comparison review of Nest New York's Pumpkin Chai 8.1 ounce candle. But before we get into that, if you're new to Touch Slayer Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. I go about that a few different ways. First of all, videos like this, the in-depth sniff comparison and reviews where I talk about the build of a fragrance, the top, middle, bottom notes, how accurate and authentic a candle is, how unique the fragrance blend is, and really what the perfumer was trying to create or evoke with that, and how it makes me feel what I smell in it. Go through the notes, top, middle, bottom notes, learn along with you as there are some notes that maybe we don't really know what they are or what they smell like, and so we figure that out together. And then talk about the wicks, the wax, the performance, the strength, the throw, the projection to really ensure that it is a clean, good burn, that there is a healthy projection to get those fragrance molecules up in the air and into our noses. And then sometimes taking that a step further into like today's video, an in-depth sniff comparison review, where not only will I talk about the fragrance, the performance, the overall candle itself, but also compare it to other fragrances, candles that you may have in your home or have smelled before, or even food, plants, botanicals, liqueur, to truly compare does this smell like this or is it not like that? So you can really get a sense, not just what's my opinion on it, do I like it, but what does it truly smell like and kind of build that fragrance in your mind to get a sense of truly what it smells like, regardless of my opinion on it. And of course I do your traditional haul videos, collective hauls, first impressions, what have you, and some fun seasonal videos as well. And before we get into the in-depth sniff comparison pumpkin chai review, I'm also excited to announce that I will be doing a candle giveaway launching in this video and also taking place over on my Instagram at Touch the Fire Twice. And that is a giveaway for Nest New York's Charcoal Woods candle from their recently launched Wilderness Collection. And if you have not already watched my review for Charcoal Woods here from a few months back, and this is the beautiful deep dark charcoal gray wax. 8.1 ounce beautiful candle. Notes on this include smoky labdanum, patchouli, and cedarwood combined with charred birchwood and a hint of black truffle. Really loving this one, great for fall. In fact, they're really kind of saying that pumpkin chai along with the incredible autumn plum and charcoal woods are sort of the trio for fall 2022. So to enter this giveaway, just make sure that you are a subscriber, give a thumbs up to this video, and comment below letting me know if you've tried Nest, what your favorite fragrance is, and if you have not tried Nest, which fragrance you're most intrigued by and interested in trying sometime in the future. And then also please do follow me over on Instagram, at Touchfire Twice, and this giveaway will run for two weeks from the date that this video uploads, and then I will come back and update both on Instagram and here in the description for the winner. And this is open to anyone in the US or Canada, happy to send this your way. Really hope that you enjoy the candle because it's beautiful. But let's jump into the Nest Pumpkin Chai. So this was actually first launched back in 2009, one of their very first seasonal scents. This again is the classic 8.1 ounce size in the traditional sort of pinstripe etched glass and metallic gold pattern there with the orange hue to the glass and a beautiful, truly pumpkin flesh orange wax there. So the Pumpkin Chai comes in four sizes. They have their two ounce votive that retails for $18. They have their 8.1 ounce classic that retails for $46. They have a three wick 21.2 ounces that retails for $78. And they now also have a large four wick that is 43.7 ounces and retails for $180. It also comes in diffusers, re-diffusers, the Pura air diffusers, and a gel hand soap as well. So digging into this, let's read the notes here. They, the way they describe it is pumpkin chai creates a cozy autumn ambiance with a blend of wild pumpkin, spicy masala chai, cardamom, ginger, and cinnamon. So we'll talk through those notes, kind of what they are, what they mean, give a little bit of history behind them, and then kind of compare, is that what I'm getting here? But before I dig into that, just my overall kind of first sniff and thoughts on this candle is that it is an incredibly, incredibly authentic pumpkin. It just opens as a very earthy, but not dirty earthy, just a true kind of vegetal pumpkin, like pumpkin flesh, pumpkin puree, not overly spiced. Though it is a spiced candle, it is not spicy, because you do have that masala chai, cardamom, ginger, cinnamon, 
but don't think your Bath and Body Works sweet cinnamon pumpkin where it's super, super heavy on like knock you out spices right towards the front of your nose. It's subtle. It's delicate, it's warm, it's comforting. This is a gourmand candle for folks who maybe don't love, they don't want a pumpkin cinnamon bun, pumpkin banana walnut muffin. They don't want it to be true foodie, but they want that gourmand, they want the comfort, they want the spice. That is absolutely what this will give you. It has food-like notes when it comes to pumpkin and spices, but it is not your baked good, it is not sweet, it is not cloying, it is not heavy, sticky maple, that sort of thing. Just a beautiful execution of a warmly spiced, authentic pumpkin candle, in a nutshell. Digging into the notes, this is where it gets interesting, for me at least. When we think of pumpkin, so I did a little digging around research, you know, what does pumpkin truly smell like? And it turns out from a true scientific chemical compound aspect. There are different organic compounds in a fresh cut pumpkin versus just a simply cooked pumpkin puree, so like your canned pumpkin. When you are cutting into a fresh cut pumpkin, there is an organic compound called cis 3 hexan one ol which is referred to as a leaf alcohol, and that is going to give you that sort of green, grassy, cut leaves scent, just that true, fresh rawness that you get when you cut into that pumpkin. Then there's also something called diacetyl, which again, also an organic compound that naturally occurs, and it gives you a sort of buttery scent. And actually diacetyl is something that is used in the artificial buttery movie theater popcorn scents out there as well, an actual movie theater butter popcorn. But then when you cook it, and when you get it in a can, it is already cooked, this puree, it really changes where the compounds completely evolve from the ones that are in the raw pumpkin to then being scents that include a malty sort of almost burnt note from something called 2-methylbutanol. I know we're not chemists here, but I, I find it a little bit interesting. Why not be accurate if we're gonna talk about it? And then there's going to be something called furfural, which is a sugar decomposition product. And it smells somewhat of grain or sawdust. It sometimes is like a, a bit of an oat aspect to it. So truly you're talking a little bit sweet, a little bit burnt, not quite caramelized, but certainly from the sugars and starches that are breaking down in that pumpkin puree, you're getting something that is not quite that fresh green vegetal, but still a bit of that malty, burnt, sugary aspect. When we dig into masala chai, masala chai actually just means spiced tea. So you actually don't want to say chai tea because that's like saying tea tea. <laughs> so masala being spiced and chai being tea. And so typically your masala chai is going to have seven core ingredients. So you've got tea leaves, traditionally black tea leaves, milk, sugar, water, of course, cardamom, black pepper, and ginger. Now there are many regional varieties of chai. It can also include star anise, cloves, cinnamon, nearly any spice that you could imagine is going to t be in some variations and blends of chai, but traditionally you're going to at least have cardamom, ginger, and often cinnamon, star anise, cloves, maybe nutmeg, black pepper, and of course it's that beautiful creamy spiced warming, very autumnal blend of ingredients. So cardamom, there's your earthy bl smoky black cardamom, which is not what this is. And here you're going to have the more fresh green cardamom, and that's going to be a, almost minty, a bit camphorous, think almost kind of like a eucalyptus, that, that fresh whoosh aspect that you get. Sweetly aromatic, very green, a brightness, and just very traditional for chai, and one of those notes that when you smell it, you know exactly what you're smelling. Getting into ginger, it's going to be that peppery heat, that sweet, spicy, pungent, aromatic, warm and warming note, comforting, soothing, sometimes almost a camphorous or kind of lemon citrus angle to it as well. And then of course, cinnamon. The cinnamon in masala chai is typically going to be your Ceylon cinnamon, which is a much softer, delicate cinnamon and true cinnamon versus the cassia cinnamon, which you see a lot of times in the Americas, which is that thick, hard cinnamon, that's more your pungent, red hot cinnamon. But the true Ceylon cinnamon is that delicate, mildly spicy sweet, a little hint of floral, a little hint of citrus, light, bright, and a beautiful, true expression of cinnamon. I break Ceylon cinnamon six and a half and sprinkle them into my coffee grounds in my drip coffee maker every day to have the most beautiful cinnamon coffee. And you just can't get that from your traditional Icacia cinnamon. 
it's just going to be quite different than the Ceylon cinnamon, which is what you're gonna find in your chais. All that to say, sniffing this, when you have that fresh pumpkin, it's, it's more probably almost toward your canned pumpkin in the sense, so not a pumpkin pie, doesn't have a ton of sweetness to it or the gloopy fillings that you might think of a pumpkin pie and certainly no foody, you know, crust notes or things like that. But it does have that, that malty cooked, um, not quite burnt, but think maybe a bit caramelized note that you're gonna get from a puree with a little bit of that, that fresh balance in there as well. Some of, some of that butteriness, just a beautiful pumpkin. And there is a creaminess, I think somewhat from the pumpkin, but also if it is that masala chai that is going to be your black tea leaves. Not, not heavy on tea by any means because that milk and sugar is going to really counteract any tannic kind of strong astringency that black tea can have. But again, it's not overly sweetened in sugar. It's not, it's not your Starbucks pumps of super, super sugary chai. The cardamom is also present. If you don't like cardamom, I still think you could really enjoy this candle. If you do like cardamom, you will be able to pick it out and appreciate it, but it doesn't overwhelm with it. Sometimes cardamom, because it is a very aggressive fragrance, it can overwhelm a scent. This is just enough in there that it is present. It adds that aromatic, sweet, bright, almost minty note to it. And of course, your ginger. This is your traditional spicy ginger, but it's not overtaking. I would, the thing else I will caution when it comes to the cardamom, the ginger, and the cinnamon, they really are just sort of nested, so to speak, within the chai note in my mind. So it's not as if it is pumpkin and equal parts of cinnamon and ginger and cardamom. It really is pumpkin, your masala chai, which happens to be made up of these notes because they're so well balanced that you can't almost, even my nose that is very familiar with those three spices, you don't really pick them out super strongly on their own, which is what you want. It is a blend. It should be a warming blend of these spiced tea notes. And that is exactly what it is. But it's again, spiced, not spicy. Very subtle yet significant difference there. The other thing I will say is really beautiful burn. With As with any single wick candle, sometimes you may have to put aluminum foil around the edge for that first burn, that first pull to get it really going. They use a paraffin blend here. They say it's, it's predominantly paraffin, and then they add other ingredients as well, which they don't disclose, but could be palm, could be soy, could be coconut. Hard to say, but it's certainly softer than your... You see, I can just kind of poke a hole in it there. Then your traditional paraffin that you sometimes have seen in, you know, Yankee Candles of yore. <laughs> but uh, it is a proprietary blend. It takes a little while to pull out, but it gets a beautifully clean burn. It doesn't get overly hot, and it actually stays slightly viscous when it is fully pulled. And that gives it a nice slow burn, healthy projection, healthy throw, exactly what you'd expect if you're familiar with Nest at all. It's not going to necessarily scent your entire home in a, the single wick version at least, but it is a healthy throw that you can certainly smell. You can see here a really healthy pool and just very pretty as it shines through the glass. And because this is a tapered glass, the further down you get, the narrower it gets, the quicker it pulls out. So it gets easier and easier after that first initial burn. Let's do the in-depth sniff comparison review now. That's what is, I think, a lot of fun. First, we're gonna start with, I won't bury the lead here. So the one that this perhaps is closest to is Pumpkin Carving from Bath & Body Works, though it has gone through many iterations. This was actually launched under the Slacken & Co. Bath & Body Works era when Slacken & Co. was purchased by L Brands. And then at that point, it was either the Perfect Pumpkin or Pumpkin Patch, then Pumpkin Carving, Heirloom Pumpkin, etc. So if you smell Pumpkin Carving, you also have smelled whether you know it or not, the original OG Perfect Pumpkin or Pumpkin Patch from Slacken & Co. Notes on this one, freshly carved pumpkin, spiced pumpkin seeds, smooth brown sugar. And where they are similar, this really is sort of like their sister scents. They're different enough that it's worth purchasing both, but they also are very complementary to each other. The pumpkin carving is a bit sharper with the spices. I would say probably a little bit less nuance where you've got the true balanced blend of spices in the pumpkin chai. This one hits you a little bit more straightforward with some cinnamon and perhaps a bit of clove in here. Where they are quite similar is the pumpkin note itself, that kind of mix where it's not quite just the fresh raw pumpkin flesh, pretty close to it. It's like that maybe with a little bit of that fresh cut leaves slash buttery undertone, almost going to that malt-like burnt grainy cooked puree of pumpkin. 
There's almost something in the background of this that feels a bit citrusy to me, which could be one of the spices coming through, specifically when I compare it to pumpkin carving. Right, pumpkin carving is maybe a tiny bit sweeter and stronger on the spice with the same pumpkin. This is softer. I think whatever milk and sugar that's in the masala chai softens those spices. And I just get a little bit of a, like an orange oil in the background, like a little bit of orange zest. Not super bright summery, but just a, a depth of, think of, you know, your pomanders. It's not pomander, but that spiced orange, there's just the tiniest hint of it in the background there, which could be an actual note that's just not listed because there are probably 10 to 12 notes in here versus the four or five they give us. So I do think there's a bit of a citrus angle in there as well. Then let's compare it to, in the Bath & Body Works brand, again, White Pumpkin. So White Pumpkin is White Pumpkin, Autumn Spice Blend, not many details, and Ground Cinnamon, which is probably part of the Autumn Spice Blend. For me though, I have, I've, have often said, this is very milky and very sweet and quite spicy. It really, to me, is a milky chai latte. They can say white pumpkin, there's not so much pumpkin in here. It's autumnal, but this really, you almost get the black tea in here. You get a lot of heavy spices, a ton of sugar, but you get a lot of milkiness in there too, like a, a true frothed milk. So it's, it's, it's really more like almost towards latte. Though masala chai does have milk and sugar, but this is very milky, very sugary, more Americanized in a sense. Where these are similar, they're not that similar. They're both variations of chai, but this almost is like your authentic <laughs> chai uh, from India. And this is your Americanized Starbucks version of chai without the pumpkin. This has the pumpkin. Again, when you're gonna compare a Nest fragrance to a Bath & Body Works, typically you're gonna get a bit more nuance, a few more notes in the Nest because it just is that little bit more delicately built blend of notes. Then the last Bath & Body Works we're doing, Pumpkin clove, notes on this one, clove buds, ground cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, and fresh pumpkin. So again, all variations on pumpkin and spice. That's what any pumpkin autumnal candle is going to be. This is almost, I would say, a similar pumpkin as the pumpkin scent from Pumpkin Carving and somewhat similar to the Nest pumpkin, but as the, the name implies, a heavy dose of clove. They say cinnamon nutmeg. Yeah, probably a bit of like a, more of a cassia, red hot spicy cinnamon versus the soft Ceylon cinnamon. So because of that, there's no chai aspect to this. It really is your more traditional, autumnal, heavy, you know, witch's broom spice blend versus a masala chai blend. Almost to the point where the spices overtake the pumpkin in this, but you get much more of the fresh pumpkin in the nest. But if you want more of that leaning toward a craft store spiced. Again, think of the dried witch's broom. That's gonna be your pumpkin clove. Also a nice scent in its own right. And then going to compare to two homeworks by Slacken & Co. First up we have Golden Harvest Pumpkin. This was part of a QVC Today Special Value trio of scents from homeworks back in 2021. Notes on this one, whipped pumpkin, fresh cardamom, spiced maple rum, cinnamon, vanilla, marshmallow whole heck of a lot going on there with the notes. Each of those are almost like their own accord with notes probably nested under them, but worth comparing certainly based on the pumpkin and the call out of fresh cardamom. This first, for having vanilla marshmallow and maple rum, there's not a whole lot of sweetness to it. Maybe a little bit of maple in the background, but I don't really get much vanilla and I don't get an ooey gooey marshmallow. What I do get is a similar pumpkin to this and to your pumpkin carving. This still feels fresher though, and this feels a little bit more cooked. And this has some of the cardamom, that cooling, slightly camphorous cardamom. The seeds are just there. It's like they were steeped with the chai, but then maybe strained out because it's such a strong, almost bitter note potentially. This is duller. So this is a bit calmer of a scent than some of the bright freshness that you get, which is hard to maintain a bright freshness when you have milk and sugar in a blend, but it's certainly there with that. And then the final Homeworks to compare to, Chai Latte, which was released in early 2022 by Homeworks. And the notes here, spiced tea, steamed heavy cream, chai spice, and vanilla. So some similar notes there explained in a different way. I actually did do a review on this one a while back if you wanna check that out as well. And to me, this one was frankly a bit of a miss in the sense that it doesn't have enough spices. I mean, you literally see spices on the top of milky tea with these star anise pods, but 
I really don't get many spices. It's more of like a creamy, milky, a little bit of a black tea in the background. Little, spices are there, but it's like you just didn't add enough of them. You just didn't let the tea steep long enough in the water. And a little bit of almost like a nuttiness in this one. As you'll see, some of these I'm comparing because the name would indicate that they could potentially be similar to our Nest Pumpkin Chai. And others I'm comparing because the name may or may not indicate a similarity, but the actual scent does. So with the chai latte, not, no, they really don't have much in common at all other than what they're going after. Pumpkin clove, not so much either. A bit of that golden harvest pumpkin, but you've got brighter, fresher with the nest. And the closest likely, I would say, is your pumpkin carving, pumpkin patch, perfect pumpkin, heirloom pumpkin. To me, these are both must-haves. I do love white pumpkin, but for, for me, White pumpkin is a super sweetie, milky, spicy, kind of coffee house, sans the coffee <laughs> beverage. Whereas these two are your autumnal pumpkins because they have such beautiful, fresh and pureed pumpkin notes in there. Sweeter on your pumpkin carving, a little bit less of the sweetness on here, but this just leans a little bit more botanical. So perhaps a bit more sophisticated in that sense, but truly a beautiful, beautiful, pure pumpkin, spiced, I still say a little tiny hint of an orange citrus in the background, just enough to give it a little bit more of that air of freshness on a cool, crisp day. It brings a little bit of a crispness to it where the fragrance is not weighed down by frankly, the spices, but more specifically, the milk or sugar that, that is likely part of the masala chai. All told, a beautiful scent. Highly recommend checking it out. It really is a new must-have for me in my autumnal burning, and clearly a classic because it has been around now for over a decade from Nest New York. That wraps the in-depth sniff comparison review of this video. Again, if you stuck around this long, thank you so much. Let me know what you think of pumpkin chai or any of the other Nest fragrances. And again, if you'd like to enter the giveaway for the Nest Charcoal Woods 8.1 ounce classic candle, please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, follow me over on Instagram at touchfire twice, and comment there, here, or both to let me know what your favorite Nest fragrance is, or if you've not experienced Nest before, the fragrance that you're most interested in trying. And in the next two weeks, I will draw the winner and get this candle sent to you. Thank you as always for watching, and until next time, take care.